Hi there, happy hump day and welcome to Wednesday. Every year I have what I see as my book of the year and a couple of years ago the book was Johan Hari's Lost Connections. If you haven't read it, it's really worth reading and as a journalist what he has done is really dug into the what many people are now referring to as almost like a an epidemic of loneliness of people feeling disconnected feeling isolated and what it really reminded me of is the criticality that we have as humans of being connected because as humans we're hardwired for connection and when we feel isolated when we feel disconnected it impacts our mental health and our well-being in the book he recounts a really interesting study which has been going for a number of years and it asks quite a simple question and the question is how many confidants do you have and by that they mean how many people can you really turn to when you need support when you're in times of of crisis and when the research started and this research was done in the US most people could identify at least three people when the research was done in 2004 the answer for most people was none no one now for me I found that figure staggering to think that there are so many people who are, you know always surrounded by people and yet we can still feel alone still feel that we don't have someone that we're connected with that we could turn to when we really need support and help and it reminded me of how we often talk about networking in a work context because we all hear the importance of networking but depending on how you network and how you engage with people it can either fuel connection or fuel disconnection because often when people network and the people who are doing it could still be good people nice people they're doing it in a way that feels transactional feels impersonal and I always remember this person who I met many years ago and when you met her you felt like you were being networked to the connection didn't feel genuine it didn't feel as though they were really interested in you on a personal level and really interested in building a relationship it was more about what they could take away from that relationship and yet when you think about it the best relationships both in your personal life and in your career in a, in a work sense are relationships that are connected are deep are meaningful are ones where both people walk away feeling as though the relationship has enhanced their life rather than detracted from their life in some way and so when I think about this in a network context in terms of you building relationships that support your career and enhance your life it's about looking for relationships that have breadth depth and also are based on reciprocity because when you have a breadth in your network you have people who have diversity different experiences different backgrounds these are people who can challenge how you think how you see the world they can help open up your perspective help you see things in a different light that actually enhances your ability to solve problems and to work through complex issues then there's depth and these are relationships that have character they have substance and that's because they're based on trust authenticity and integrity they support you you're supporting them you inspire them they inspire you you challenge them they challenge you there's a give and take in the relationship and both people walk away enriched through the connection and then lastly reciprocity the relationship is two-way it's not just take 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 you're giving along the way and so you're both parties to the relationship are getting something out of it now of course all of this takes time and it takes energy so if you want to build a healthy relationship a healthy connected engaged series of relationships that underpin your network Here's a couple of things to consider. 
one, take the long-term view. It can be very easy to be short-term, far better to be long-term. Be proactive with the interactions and also be patient. Extend the hand of friendship. Always look for ways that you can add to the relationships in your network. Be intentional in terms of the relationships that you're building. At times, hold your ground. It can be important with relationships to also have boundaries. There might be times when you need to say no. Now, when you're doing that, you're saying it with care and consideration, but you also need to make sure that the relationship is something that actually fuels your soul as well. Be you. It's really important when you're building a relationship to be authentically you. Show gratitude and be generous. Because gratitude, when you, one, when you show it, helps you feel good. But also for the people who are on the receiving end of it, they feel good too. And lastly, know when to move on. Sometimes relationships naturally run their course. Sometimes a relationship that can be healthy despite the best intentions, despite effort that you put in, may not turn out to be a healthy relationship. You need to know when it's time to move on. I always love the quote from Dale Carnegie who said, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get people interested in you. That is a great place to start. Take care, have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.